Welcome to Cigar City Radio, episode number 20. It's been a while, man. 20, 20 episodes. I'm very surprised with this. Wow. Yeah, I'm surprised with this. 20 weeks of Cigar City Radio. How are you still listening? How are we still doing this? I have no idea. Very carefully. <laughs> I'm your host, Randy Ojeda, and making the magic happen, Mr. Jason Solanez. I really don't have anything detrimental to say today, so... I'm, All right, we'll just move on. Yeah, we'll, we'll just move yeah. on. That's enough. Don't even look at him. Are you currently listening to this episode on an iPhone? Because if you are, you should head to the podcast app, search Cigar City Radio, and leave a review, and tell us what you think about the show. Even if you think it sucks, just tell us. We need to know. Yeah, we need to know. Most importantly, iTunes needs to know. So head on down there and leave us a review. Or if you're so inclined, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at Cigar City Radio, or email us at CigarCityRadio at gmail.com. This episode of Cigar City Radio was recorded at The Blind Tiger in Ybor City. The Blind Tiger is a 1920s speakeasy-style coffee shop serving coffee, tea, vegan pastries, and more. With locations in Ybor City and Seminole Heights, check them out at BlindTigerCafe.com. We are now less than a month away from our first ever Noche Buena party taking place during South by Southwest with 15 bands. Jason, run through them. We have Hockey Dad. Hockey Papa. Detective. DTCV. High Waisted. Send Medicine. Jackson Boone and the Ocean Ghosts. Remember that one. The Undercover Dream Lovers. Dirty Dishes. As opposed to the Clean Dishes. Warbly Jets, Field Trip, Shark Muffin. Oh, what a great name, Shark Muffin. I I love it. (laughs) Fruit and Flowers, Tall Juan, Plastic Pinks. Veterans of the Cigar City Radio Show, don't forget. And Vanny Hands. And when's that show happening, Jason? That show's happening on Wednesday, March 15th at Stay Gold in Austin, Texas. It's going on from 3 p.m. to 2 a.m. There's no cover. But you must be 21 and up to enter. So if you're under 21 and you show up, you have been forewarned. Yeah, we're not going to allow you in. It's the night your abuela has been waiting for. Search Noche Buena Party South by Southwest on Facebook events or RSVP at CigarCityManagement.com slash SXSW. We're also now available on the Do 512 app if you're so inclined. For this week's Fade Out, we have a brand new track from Jackson Boone called Mystic Winds. Jackson is one of the artists that we manage here at Cigar City Management. And as mentioned, he'll be performing at the Noche Buena Party, which is going on when, Jason? It's going on on March 15th in Austin, Texas from 3 p.m. to 2 a.m. And can I get in if I'm 20? No, Randy, you must be 21. Bring your ID, please. My my ID? Yeah. All right. Jackson Boone's Mystic Winds premiered last week via Atwood Magazine, who called the track a fully realized poetic observation on spirituality and the interconnectivity of all life. It's a damn. Yeah, that's a pretty tall order. Mystic Winds is the first single from Jackson Boone's upcoming album, Organic Light Factory, out March 10th on Rain Dust Records. If you dig what you hear, you can pre-order the album on iTunes today. So listen through to the end of the episode for that. Our guest on this episode is harpist Mary Lattimore. We spoke with her before her sold-out show with Parquet Courts at Crowbar in Ybor City. She's played harp on recordings for Thurston Moore, Kurt Vile, Steve Gunn, Quilt, and many others. Her album, At the Dam, is out now on Ghostly International. So here it is, episode 20. about what it's like to be a touring musician but a touring musician with a harp seems like a totally different beast right like that's a big instrument yeah it's gigantic it's six feet tall 
Wow. And um, I'm just driving by myself on this tour. So I have a Volvo. Um, the heart fits in the back. And it's just a lot of driving, mm. solo style, a lot of podcasts, a lot of like, you know. Yeah. Um, listening listen to, to a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Man, that, but that's rough. Like mm -hmm. just you and the harp. Yeah. Yeah. Me and the harp and the car and it's, yeah, the three of us. <laughs> yeah. And is it just because that's the only, that's the only way it'll fit? Yeah. Um, also, I mean, I don't mind driving so much. Like I, I like being on the open road, you yeah. know, it's adventurous and it's fun. But yeah, like the, the harp, I don't think would fit into the, the van with all the guys and all their gear. So yeah. it makes more sense to just drive myself. Oh, yeah. a lot of solitude. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it kind of creates an intimate relationship with you and your heart. But. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then, and no, and just like taking that out and having to like bring it in to set up. And yep. How much does it weigh? It weighs about 85 pounds. Oh, my gosh. Jesus. <laughs> so you're like, you're like ripped. Thing, I don't you know. know. <laughs> no. I definitely asked for a lot of help, I you know. Imagine, yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah. You'd have to be a bodybuilder yeah. to lug that in and out of a venue. Mm -hmm. So. You're touring with Parquet Courts now, and you've also, you know, you've collaborated with, like, an amazing list of people, you know, like, uh, Kurt Vile and Steve Gunn, and Arcade Fire, too. Like. Um, I played a show with them. Oh, right on. Yeah. In the early days, 2005, I played a show with them. That was the first show I ever played. That's amazing. The um, first show ever was with yeah. Arcade Fire. Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. My first show ever was at Skipper's Smokehouse oh, in yeah. North Tampa. <laughs> like, very different uh -huh. from Arcade Fire. And then, so, like, over time, you've kind of become, like, the indie harpist. Oh, in cool. I'll take it. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know, I don't know anybody mm -hmm. else who's known for their harp work. You yeah, know? Th thanks. That's amazing. It's really fun. I really like um, writing parts, you mm. know, so it's a, it's a cool way to sort of incorporate the harp into, you know, rock music and you know it's really fun so do you write a lot of the parts that when you collaborate with people or mm -hmm. is it more like they give you a no i thing? write most of the parts okay. yeah but they have ideas i mean um i just played on the new clientele record mm -hmm. and the um a guy wrote a piece one of the members wrote a piece on the piano and so i had to sort of translate that piano piece into the onto the harp which yeah. was pretty tricky but usually it's me writing my own parts yeah i guess that makes sense because you know thinking from a songwriting perspective it's like you know sometimes you can it's not tough to write for piano or mm -hmm. guitar if you don't really play that instrument but i don't even know where i'd begin to transpose something or come up with something on the harp you know yeah 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 like i don't even i i guess i guess that's kind of the cool thing about you now being on the road and you mm -hmm. being on a high profile tour like this where people actually get to see yeah. a harpist perform. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the things I've heard from a bunch of people who are going to the show tonight that uh -huh. like, yeah, we've never seen a harp on yeah, stage. Yeah, that's so cool. I love <laughs> it. That's that's really like my dream come true is to play a lot of venues that have never had a harp there before, or, you know, for people who have never seen one in person and that's really a thrill. So yeah. how do they mic a harp? I have Where a pickup. I oh, have um sweet. That it's a easy. it's four contact mics all mm. linked together and it goes into the the harp is hollow, you know, so it goes yeah into the back little piezo mics mm -hmm. exactly it's four of them so it's really sounds that's good sweet. yeah yeah I never would have guessed mm -hmm. no that's easy because we were talking about that too we're like well how would we we'd want to get all the different tones so mm -hmm. how would we really yeah. you know we uh, wouldn't we wouldn't no no we would we, never we, we would be very bad at that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's really cool so you're exposing a lot of people to the yeah heart, it's really fun cool. and i i mean i like playing with bands that aren't exactly like me you know mm. um i've been on a couple tours recently where it's you know, heavier bands or, you know, more punk punk rock bands that are like, you know, the harp is sort of an unexpected Absolutely. thing. So, and the audiences have been great. So have they responded well? To yeah. A the, lot of people like being really quiet in the front, you know? Yeah. So it's cool. Yeah. Well, the music is the music you write too is very like, you know, it's, it's ripe for sort of contemplation and like self-realizations, <laughs> you know? So maybe people are just questioning their life. You know? Oh my God. <laughs> like in a good way, in a good yeah, way. Yeah, I'm questioning know? mine too. So, you know, like we're all questioning yeah. our lives together. As we sit here, we uh -huh. totally are. So, yeah. um, so I, I saw that you just, uh, you just moved out of Philly. Mm -hmm. there, you were living in Philly for a while. Yeah. Um, I lived in Philly for like 
three months, four oh, months, cool. something like that. Did you and like it? It was all right. It yeah. was all right. I like the food. Uh huh. Um, it wasn't good for my waistline. But oh, right. It was like I did. I I got. They knew me by name at one of the cheesesteak places. Oh, and wow. That's when I was like, all right, I gotta stop. Uh-huh. I've only been here. You're like, like I month. gotta move away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I lived like right off U Penn's campus. Okay. Um, I was. I had an internship there for a while. Oh, so. nice. But uh, what's the scene been like in Philly? Because I know. Right when I was leaving there was when some cooler stuff was starting to happen in like mm-hmm. the Northern Liberties area and everything. Yeah. So what's oh, it like now? It's great. I mean, it's just a, like a really solid community of musicians um, all supporting each other. It's, it's really, you know, it's the kind of place where you can just say, let's jam, let's get together, just play for fun and people are into it. And uh, it's really um, a very special place. I love it there yeah. so much. Yeah. And Philly's one of a kind. Jason mm-hmm. and I had a pretty one of a kind experience in Philly. We were supposed to go to what is it, the Roots picnic? Mm. Was it? Yeah, we were yeah. supposed to go. Jason, like, well, all I was in Philly, he flew oh, to wow. Philly so that we could go to the Roots picnic, Whoa. and we never went to the Roots yeah. picnic. Oh, no. <laughs> we, were, we were too occupied in everything. Yeah, oh. we, but we literally walked from like my apartment was like 40th and Walnut. Like we walked from there to like the end of Philly, like to the river, you Whoa, know, and yeah. back. Wow. <laughs> like, that sounds yeah, fun. Yeah, I just forgot about the show. Oh, man. <laughs> it was we, very fun. Yeah, we had yeah. some root beer from some Amish people that uh-huh. we bought on the street. Like, yep. Fun. Yeah, yeah, great day in Philly. Yeah, it sounds awesome. Yeah. It's very, uh, it's a very, like, walkable, mm-hmm. like, city in Philly. Like, it's definitely a place you don't really need a car for. Totally. You know? Unless so. you have a harp. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> they would definitely need a car. I was taking mm-hmm. three showers a day because it was midsummer. Oh, and yeah. Walking all oh, day hot. in the city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's crazy. So, but you're not originally from Philly, though, No, right? I'm from North Carolina okay. originally. And what prompted the move to... To, to Philly the city or... Of Brother Love? Or um, just in general, like, where have you, where have you gone? I have, um... After North Carolina, I went to school in Rochester, New York. Okay. So um, after that, I um, I lived in Vienna in Austria for four years. Cool. And then my visa ran out, so I had to pick a place in the U.S. I thought it was time to sort of buckle down and like think about career. So, um, so I picked Philly because there was a really nice group of people there that I knew from Rochester. Yeah. And uh, they they all played music, and so I and seem really affordable there it is affordable yeah. yeah and so um yeah i just moved there and i stuck around for 12 years yeah wow yeah now i'm headed to la oh of course that's the next yeah. move right gotta try it out yeah mm-hmm. when do you head out to la after Mar- this tour? march 1st yeah oh so very yeah. soon mm-hmm. but i have another tour in march so i'm basically just going to check out my apartment and to pay the rent and then to leave again which yeah. is crazy <laughs> Yeah, just take in a little bit of smog and then yeah. get out of there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that should be fun. A little sunshine, too. What's, what's the next tour you're on? Is it, um, has it been announced? Are we... Yep, I'm okay. going on tour with this woman, Katie. She plays under Waxahachie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Katie Crutchfield. Yeah, and then um, Kevin Morby. He's, he's yeah. nice. Um, so the three of us are doing three solo sets. Awesome. So that in that case, we're all riding in the same van, which is cool. I think it'll be really fun. That sounds I really like fun. like those guys a lot. Yeah. What a lineup. Cool. Yeah, then Are I'm you... going on tour with real estate after that. Sweet. So, yeah. So it's just going to be a busy year for you then. It is. It's really busy. Yeah. So last year you dropped the album uh, At The Dam, mm-hmm. right? Which was on Ghostly International. Yeah. And I had heard that you wrote this album basically while you were traveling. This right. is kind of your uh, your travel piece. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Like yeah. you're on the road, you know? Totally. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, so what was that like to like just write while you were traveling? While... I got... um. Some a couple of Airbnbs, and I stayed in Marfa, Texas, at a friend's place. So, you know, I stayed five days at each in each place, and just sort of holed up and um, really concentrated on the the feeling of the landscapes and things like that in each place. And I really loved it. You know, I like to come up with little stories in my head um, and improvise coming from that. So um, it was really. It really gave me a lot of um, inspiration, all those places. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm envisioning you just sort of out in nature, just uh-huh. like harping it up. Totally. I I, um, I had a little mini residency for five days in Joshua Tree, California. So cool. I um, I would wake up every morning when the, with the sunrise so I could see the sunrise, and then I would drink a coffee, and then I would wheel the harp out onto the porch and just play and record outside, basically. So that was pretty fun. 
And were those were those the recordings that ended up mm-hmm. being on the record? Yeah. Oh wow! So you just recorded them right there, uh-huh. and then spliced it up with your little mix of yeah of, of crazy sounds, <laughs> yeah, uh huh, <laughs> and, and and awesome production. Mm-hmm. That's that's super cool. It's fun. So last year was the album. This year is is it the year of touring? Yeah, it is. I also have um. I don't think it's been announced yet, but it, I bet it doesn't matter. Um, I have another record coming out in may i think it's sort of like a collected it's called collected pieces it's sort of like a collection of odds and ends um that i just recorded by myself um over the past couple years in philly at home so that's coming out on cassette and a digital record it's not coming out on vinyl or anything but it'll be like a digital record so that that'll be exciting and then um i have another record coming out with this woman elise thebner miller she plays synth. She plays kind of like um crowdy synth, and uh, it's a live record, and it's coming out in April. So that's awesome. Yeah, a live re- live synth harp record. Uh huh. Sweet. Yeah, it'll be fun. Is is it freeing to write kind of? Because I know you've collaborated a lot mm-hmm. with people, but do you prefer sort of writing by yourself at times, or do you like the collaborative process? I like it all. You know, I I like both. Yeah. You know, when I'm playing a lot of solo shows, I do miss having someone to sort of jam with. But, yeah. um, you know, I also like the control of being able to just play by myself and, you know, just, uh, I don't know, just rely on myself. <laughs> yeah. How did you start playing the harp? Like, what, were, what got you into the instrument? Uh, my mom is a harpist. Oh. So she's a professional harpist from Asheville, North Carolina. And um, she's really busy all the time, you know, playing weddings. And she plays in the Nashville Symphony Orchestra. Sweet. And so I sort of got started through her. I took lessons from a friend of hers and uh, when I was 11. Yeah. So it's passed down to the family. How did she start? Oh. Was, where, <laughs> yeah, let's let's, let's yeah. trace her the lineage. No, 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 where does the really. heart begin in the family? Yeah, yeah no, um... My mom had a next door neighbor when she was a kid who played the harp. So the next door neighbor was about 15, I yeah, think. Yeah. And she was like the cool older girl. And so mom wanted to learn. Yeah. So cool. That's right on. Yeah. So you're a second generation mm-hmm. artist. Yeah. That's, that's wild. Yeah. I just, it's just not, it's not the instrument that you would expect yeah. to pick up. I I don't I've met a lot of musicians. If I've ever met a harpist, I they didn't say they were a harpist. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were right, shy gotcha. about it. So uh-huh. I'm curious about like if uh if it's not passed down in families or something mm-hmm. like that, how do people just start? Like who? Right. How do people decide that's the instrument that I want? You know? Yeah, you'd be that's... surprised. I think a lot of people start because they've seen the Nutcracker, <laughs> you know, yeah. or something like that, or like you know, a cartoon where. A, yeah. Yeah. mermaid is playing a harp or something like that. A yeah, princess yeah. is playing a harp. You know, I think it's it's sort of around in pop culture. Or Joanna yeah. Newsom, I think she was also a big influence on yeah. on people learning the harp. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, well, that, that answers yeah. my mm-hmm. one question for the night. Okay. <laughs> I think the last ex- ex- exposure I had to the harp was, uh, this is, I don't know if I want to admit this, was Gilmore Girls. Oh, There's yeah. There's that, that uh-huh. harpist in the... Totally. Uh-huh. In the, uh, what's the, the dragonfly in? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Michelle can handle it. Exactly. My, my wife will be happy that, that I just dropped that one Aww. in. <laughs> I but, love the Gilmore Girls. They're great. Yeah. See, there's some harp in there. You should get, <laughs> yeah. on, the, you should get on the next Net, Netflix <laughs> right. series. Yeah. Mary Lattimore playing harp for the uh-huh. Gilmore Girls. It yes. would work. Yeah. So so what's it like touring with Parquet Courts? Oh, they're so fun. We're having a great time. Because they're like blowing up right now. Yeah, they're like, huge. Yeah. Um, they they just got nominated for a Grammy for their album art. So really? Andrew yeah. is going to the Grammys um, in the next couple of days. Right on. Yeah. Right on. That's super cool. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna you're not gonna go down to the Grammys too. No, I actually I got a solo show in Chapel Hill. Oh okay. um, so Andrew is uh, one of the singers, you know, and he designed the the album cover. So he's going to the Grammys. So we had to cancel. They had to cancel their Chapel Hill show. So uh, yeah. instead, I'm doing it solo. Yeah. And the other guys are going to sit in and we're going to have a jam. Sweet. Yeah, it should be fun. That's super cool. That's super cool. Do you do you, do you jam with them fairly often? I never have. Never have? No, so oh. we'll see how it goes. It'll be fun. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. You going to play some of their tunes? Or they... I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I think we better talk about it, but yeah. we'll see. It should be um, a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, and you've also done, like, soundtrack work and stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Like, is, what's what's that like? 
it's really fun. I've done a combination, a mixture of like, um, you know, playing other people's parts that they've written for scores mm-hmm. of records and that uh, for scores of of movies, and then um, also coming composing the soundtrack stuff. So yeah, um, I imagine you'll get a lot more offers like that in LA. I hope so. Yeah, that's, that's kind of why I'm moving there. It's just to get more opportunities like that, and just to get creative. Yeah. Because that's the thing is, like, with music, you can kind of be anywhere and still be part of the music industry, even though it definitely has a kind of a bubble in, in L.A. and in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the, you know, the film and television industry, like, if you're not in L.A., it's really hard to right. make those connections and get those opportunities. I'm sure, you know, Sony probably has a, a list, at probably five, six people deep of harpists, right? Uh-huh. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, they probably have a handful of harpists. Uh-huh. So, yeah, so how, I don't, how does one get on that list? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I, I think I have to join a union. Mm. I think that's one the of the harpist main union or like the musicians union. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's a requirement, but I guess I'll find out, you know? Yeah. That's such a, such a leap of faith to, mm-hmm. to move out, to, especially after being sort of settled. In I Philly know for 12 years. I'm sad about moving, but hopefully it'll be a wise decision. Yeah. We'll see. Do they have Wawa in LA? No. Oh, they man. have Wawa down here, don't yeah. they? Yeah, oh, we have Wawas amazing. everywhere now. It's amazing. They just yeah, started Wawa. popping up three years ago, and they're yeah. fucking everywhere. Yeah. It's a That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah, Wawa. I, I didn't know like what Wawa was mm-hmm. until I got to Philly, and then everybody's like, what, you're you're going to 7-Eleven? What's yeah. wrong with you? Like, go to Wawa. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and yeah. then I went to one, and I was like, all right. I it's see a classic. Where, yeah, I see where you're coming yeah. from. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they sponsor like the big... Uh, it's for the Fourth of July party, is oh, like right. the Wawa Festival totally. and stuff like that. So Hoagie Fest, yeah, Hoagie <laughs> Fest. Oh yeah. man, that's a thing. Yeah, don't. Get well, because it's like well, that's why they, there's like themed, like why they do uh, discounted um, like hoagies and stuff for us. Like we mm-hmm. obviously aren't having Hoagie Fest, but it'll be like <laughs> Wawa's Hoagie Fest, and everyone here freaks out because mm-hmm. they can get them for like four dollars. Yeah, it's awesome. but yeah, it's a real thing. Like uh-huh. no, that's that impressive. Would hurt me. That would hurt me so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from Philly then, man. Someone oh, send Jason going. to Philly for Hoagie <laughs> yeah. Fest. Yeah, if you're willing to buy my ticket and house me and pay for all my hoagies, I will love you forever <laughs> until I leave. Yeah. <laughs> so are you a big hoagie fan? Sure. Mary? I like veggie hoagie with horseradish sauce. Veggie that's hoagie? My, yeah, that's my favorite. Um, I take I go to this one Wawa by the ocean. It's in ship bottom... Um, New Jersey, mm. and there's a Wawa right there. So I go change into my swimsuit, get my hoagie, get my fresh pineapple, big bottle of water, and then go right out to the beach. That sounds great. It's Wawa number seven hundred. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got yeah. the boots on the Wawa. I even wrote a song called Wawa by the Ocean. Oh. It's, it's gonna be. <laughs> it's funny that we would talk about Wawa. Um, <laughs> Why um, wouldn't we? It's gonna be on that new digital record, actually. That's, so. Oh, sweet. And then, well, you'll know exactly the Wawa. If somebody yeah. listening to this wants to go to New Jersey and uh-huh. go to Wawa number 700, yeah. they can do it. Uh-huh. They, and hey, they can Wawa. listen to your music. Sponsor and Maybe Wawa Lattimore. should play the song in their yeah. store. Yeah, cut the check, Wawa. Come <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> What's up? Uh-huh. That's amazing. Yeah. Wawa. <laughs> I think I would rather hear Wawa by the ocean than another Billy Ocean song when I'm pumping gas at a Wawa. Oh, right. Yeah. True, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's their go-to. Mm-hmm. I, I get out of my dreams and get into my car <laughs> is on repeat every time every I Wawa. go to Wawa. Every Wawa. It's on the top of the playlist. It's either that or it's some sick trick someone's playing on me on when news. I go there. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have that thing about... Uh, Songs following me? Yeah, no, no. You have that thing about Ben Folds, right? Yeah, that's only one of the many songs that have plagued Whoa. my life. Yeah, um, Brick by Ben right. Folds. Oh, that's a sad one. Saddest. Right? Uh-huh. And and it's not like a popular one, right? right. You wouldn't think it like... It follows me <laughs> everywhere. Oh, wow. And it's one of those things where you just hear like the opening mm-hmm. like... Doom, 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 and you're like, oh, no. It's uh-huh. starting. But yeah, it's it's a thing. I don't know. I'm, Billy Ocean, Ben Folds. I can't say a, a song has followed me, but I'm you're hoping lucky. now that Wawa mm-hmm. by the Ocean does. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> everyone, everyone should have Wawa by the Ocean follow them. I'm excited to hear it. Cool. Again, we haven't even heard it, and we're like, we're oh, yeah. It. So. It's on Bandcamp right now. It's oh, on perfect. Ooh, there yeah. you go. Check it out on Bandcamp. I will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and is, is that something you like to do a lot while you're on the road is, is hit the beaches? Oh, yeah. I love it. And pools. 
hotel oh, pools. pools are always great, yeah. yeah, I I was at in Miami this morning, you know, and I walked by the ocean, but um, I didn't get to go swimming or anything. Cause uh, it's pressed for time, but yeah, it's, it's a little amazing. cold right now too. Yeah. The water. It's amazing though. It's February and it's so warm. Like I'm wearing a t-shirt. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, today in particular, it's very, <laughs> uh-huh. it's very warm. Yeah. So you, you, so you had Miami yesterday. Uh-huh. Tampa tonight was next. Gainesville. Gainesville. Mm-hmm. Right on. It's either usually Gainesville or Jacksonville. Yeah. So and then Atlanta. Okay. And then Chapel Hill, and then DC, and then it's done. Wow. Oh, yeah. Not bad. Mm-hmm. So you're almost done. You're almost out of the woods. Yep. And uh, then starting a new tour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, then starting a whole nother, mm-hmm. a whole nother thing. Yeah. What's the longest that you've ever been out on tour? Um, I guess a month. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty long time. Yeah, people don't realize that you mm-hmm. know what it's like to be on the road for three right? or four weeks. Like you think about like you know you go on vacation for three or four days and you're already ready to get home. Imagine. Yeah being on the road right you know i mean i've definitely been homeless now since september i haven't had an apartment Uh, since september so it's just been i so i guess i've been on tour for four months now (laughs) really that's just another name for uh, transient living Uh, yeah (laughs) i'm on tour Uh right (laughs) (laughs) truly it's just like tour after tour after tour which is great you know it's really i feel really lucky but um I think I also missed an apartment with the record collection and a cat yeah. and a bed. The creature you know. comforts. Yeah. yeah. Very important. Yeah. yeah, that'd be nice. So if you could collaborate with anyone, who, oh. anybody in the music sphere, who would you collaborate with? Oh, wow. You know, there's this this um, woman whose music I love, and I also like her a lot as a person, Liz Harris. Do you know her? Grouper is her project. I do not. It's beautiful. You should listen to it. I'm going it's to. Very I'm subtle, write it in very groupers. gorgeous. Um, and I would love to do something with her someday. Wow. What else? Juliana Barwick and I are going to um, work on a record together. She's a person I always wanted to Sweet. collaborate with. Yeah. How do these collaborations come together? Is it just people or people hitting you up? Out yeah, of the blue sort or? of like friendship style, like or me yeah. hitting someone up too. Yeah, like but, you reach out and say, like, I'd love to yeah, throw some harp down. Uh huh. Let's play or like um yeah, people writing me. It's yeah. not like a, you know, it's not like a preset thing where these labels are like. Do you get labels calling you like mm-hmm. we need you to back up this this album or? Sure. You know? Sometimes, yeah. I just played on this woman, Karen Elson's record, and I know her producer, Jonathan Wilson. Um, so he hired me to work on that record. And so that was sort of like, I didn't know any of those people besides Jonathan before we started playing. So it's really fun to get to know a whole group of people. That's really cool. Her record comes out in April. It's gorgeous. It's called Double Roses. And uh, so... So everyone listen to Double Roses? Everyone listen to Double Roses. Karen is great. Yeah, her voice is so beautiful. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, so is there any lingo that is specific to harpists that oh. only harpists that talk to other harpists <laughs> say? Or that you like tell yourself as you're picking on the harp? I don't think so. No. I, yeah, no lingo, really. All right. There's no harp, harp slang? Not really. No. I don't think Damn. so. Man. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> we just need to yeah, talk to no, yeah we need to talk no to the gangster harpist right <laughs> <laughs> the harp is the kind of instrument that is very expensive to get I'm, mm-hmm. i would assume they're not it's not cheap to right. have a harp right you know so it's unfortunate like we're seeing budget cuts from you know music education because i feel like that's yeah. going to be most people's introduction to like if the school had a harp right then they could play it you uh-huh. know like but if you you know there's not going to be a lot of kids that are going to go out there and buy a harp i know it's yeah it's really unfortunate there is you know there's some shops with like rent to own programs and you can get smaller less expensive harps sort of handmade harps and things so i mean it's not totally unaffordable but you know then you think about oh you have to get the teacher you have to get the lessons you have to get a car that can haul that thing around you know things like that so it's a real commitment when you decide that that's what you want to do and you want to play then it's not just the actual in- instrument itself. It's like, yeah. yeah, it changes everything you have to do. Yeah. You know, you have to live on the first floor yeah. of an apartment for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Right? No stairs. Yeah. You yeah, can't no drive stairs. a cool car. You have to drive a big station wagon. Car. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. That's rough. Yeah. Sweet. That's rough. But you get to play hard for a living. It's and fun. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So did you ever think when you were a, a young girl learning to play harp that one day you'd be, 
on the road no with indie bands i are, definitely didn't wow. yeah i feel very lucky that's amazing yeah well kudos to you thanks the, the, the record new record at the dam still still the new mm-hmm. record yeah right? out on ghostly international great mm-hmm. record check thanks. it out Thank mary Lattimore, any final words for our listeners nope thanks well thanks for having me <laughs> i don't know <laughs> thanks for listening yeah well, check you. out uh mm-hmm. wawa by the ocean <laughs> is uh the, our unofficial <laughs> mary Lattimore theme song <laughs> awesome <laughs> As promised, here's your fade out, Mystic Winds from the East by Jackson Boone. And Jackson Boone actually called in from the Oregon coast, so we'll let him introduce it to you. Mystic Winds is, in my eyes, about how no no religion is defiantly the way towards enlightenment. Rather, they are all epiphanies of the greater whole. And um, how kindness is a is king, is, and I try to live by that philosophy, or at least try. <laughs> and uh, leaving fear behind for peace is possible and inevitable in, in these times. All streams find their way back to the sea, back to the ocean, 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 back to the ocean. is running through.